Hey, I'm Stefan Papadakis with Papadakis Racing. Today we're in our race shop again, and unfortunately today we're tearing apart one of our 1,000 horsepower engines that we blew up. When you're making 250 horsepower per cylinder, stuff can go wrong pretty quick. And we've had issues with blown head gaskets and stuff in the past. This time we pretty much melted down a whole piston. So hopefully we can all learn a little bit from what happened here. So let's get started. Look, I'm really putting myself out here. Most teams, if they have failures like this, really don't want to show it. This kind of stuff happens all over the place. From Formula One, IndyCar, drag racing, all kinds of stuff. First thing, we got the thing back to the shop, pull the engine out, got it on the stand, put it in the engine room, and slowly start taking it apart. Really want to take this thing apart and analyze everything to see what we can learn. First thing I noticed was the rear mainsail was actually popping out. That's due to the increased crankcase pressure. There's a few things here that make me think that there's a burnt piston. And one is that we had detonation. Number two is that we dropped a whole cylinder, which means that cylinder wasn't firing anymore, cylinder three. And then also there's tons of crankcase pressure. What that means is there's a bunch of boost and combustion that was getting into the crankcase basically through the piston, past the rings, and causing a bunch of pressure and blowing out oil out of the breather. And then also we can see here the rear main seal is starting to get pushed out as well. You can see oil in the number three exhaust port and then also all of the intake ports. I'm gonna start by tearing it down. I'm skipping a bunch of stuff on the tear down. We actually have a video where we tore one of these engines down. If you wanna see it, I'll link to that video in the description below. The valve cover spark plug tube seals are also being popped up. We actually do monitor the pressure in the crankcase and it was like five or eight PSI. So I'll go ahead and pull the number three spark plug out first. It definitely looks different than the other ones. And if you look at it, it's actually missing the porcelain, the white part, and the ground strap is also burnt off. So we've got three spark plugs here. One of them that we had issues with the morning of, another one that we pulled out halfway through that has detonation on it, and then a third plug, which is the one I just pulled out of the engine. And if you look at, see how it's like that peppery look on there? That's from detonation. This is the only cylinder that actually did have that. And it just kept beating stuff up in that cylinder. We'll get to a little bit more of why we think that happened later in the video. So I'll pull the valve cover off, look up in the valve train, turn the engine, see if there's anything wrong in the valve train, and also with the camshafts. I'll go ahead and set that on the bench and make sure everything spins properly. I'll then get all the valve train out so I can get ready to pull the cylinder head off. We've actually been upgrading to a very sophisticated head gasket set up on this because we've had head gasket issues in the past. In a situation like this where we've had some detonation and problem with the cylinder, probably would have blown the head gasket before. Now it's strong and it's not blowing and you can kind of keep going more rounds, but then you end up finding where the next weakest link is in the engine. So once you get the head off, you can see the piston is super burnt. And what's crazy is, you know, from all the detonation, you can see where it's actually burnt through the top of the piston, through the rings, and basically the combustion chamber and the crankcase are all, you know, it's vented into there now. If you look and you can see all of the pits on top of the piston, that's actually not from the detonation. That's from the spark plug porcelain, the white part of the spark plug breaking off and basically getting jumbled around in there as the piston goes up and down. Eventually it gets shot out the exhaust valve, uh, but while it was in there it was beating stuff up. And I, I've talked about the knock sensor a little bit or, or knock noise. This black sensor on the side of the block it's called a knock sensor. And the way this works, it's like a microphone and it listens for noises and you program the ECU to listen for a certain frequency. Detonation or pre-ignition happens at certain frequencies. The AEM system that we use is sophisticated enough to know if that noise is happening at a certain time in the cycle, which cylinder is actually happening in. Because all the cylinders don't fire at the same time, they fire sequentially. So if you know where the noise is happening in the revolution of the engine, it, the computer can actually tell you which cylinder is having the detonation or the pinging. Now that we're underneath the engine, you can see where the crankcase is and that combustion pressure, or actually it's not combusting anymore. So the boost pressure that's coming into the cylinder is just getting pushed into the crankcase here when the, there's a hole in the piston. And that's why it can push out the rear main seal. So I'll go ahead and pull the piston out. I'll wash it and we'll get a closer look at exactly what happened here. So here's what's super messed up. Uh, once these things start detonating, which basically means that the it's, it's pre-igniting, like there's fuel and there's air in this chamber, and as the piston's coming up, it's actually igniting before the spark plug ignites it. And when that happens, it's a huge amount of heat and force on the top of the piston, stuff that this is just not designed for. Uh, it doesn't matter the piston and parts you have in here, it's going to damage it. And it will start melting the aluminum. 
And if you look down in there, you can see not only did it make a hole in the piston, there's like molten aluminum in the bottom of the piston. And it actually got down on the rod there as well. The bearing looks good, which is usually not the case uh, because when it pre-ignites, it'll beat up that rod bearing, but uh, this one looks okay. That's all normal wear for the upper on the rod bearing. And then we'll go ahead and look at the crank journal for that number three rod, and it looks just fine as well. That's what normal cylinder wear would look like. And that's our cylinder that we had a problem with. There's actually some of the aluminum from the piston has transferred and melted onto the cylinder wall. And there's also like kind of gouges and stuff in the cylinder wall because as that piston gets really hot, it expands and gets bigger and it'll get too big for the cylinder and actually start scraping. That's why you start seeing a lot of scrapes on the skirt of the piston. In the chamber, you'll see a bunch of those dings as well. And the theory here is that when I was gapping the plugs the night before, and I've done this for 20 plus years where I'll sort of tap them on the socket. This actually may not be what happened. This is my best guess. As I was gapping them and had to make the gap a little bit smaller, I always tap them on the top of a, like a socket or something and may have cracked the porcelain. When that porcelain broke off and went through the engine, it dinged up a bunch of the piston and the, the chamber, basically. Those little dings can cause uh, pre-ignition, and those little sharp areas will make it just really hot in those sections, and they'll act kind of like a spark plug in a way and make the fuel and air mixture combust before it's supposed to. So now I've got this other little spark plug gapper, so I'm gonna try this in the future where when you wanna make the gap smaller, you screw the spark plug in and you screw down the screw and it starts pushing down on the ground strap and you can get it to the gap that you want. So let me show you guys a little bit of what happens in the data log and what we can see from the different runs. So here, like the red line is engine RPM. So from left to right is time, the beginning of a run to the end of a run. And this is basically like the heartbeat of the engine, like what's happening here. So we've got the engine RPM, the throttle, and down here at the bottom, it's knock. So that's the noise from that knock sensor. There's a normal amount of noise. I'll zoom into that run. And now you can see the knock noise at the bottom is more than the previous. It's much more than we normally see. We know that there's a problem. It's also showing us that most of the knock is happening on cylinder number three. So what we do is we start investigating and trying to figure out what's wrong there. So what we did that day was we changed the spark plug and there was definitely a problem with the spark plug in number three. We changed the number three injector. We changed the fuel to a different batch of fuel. After that did not help it on next the next runs, then we actually pulled some timing out in that cylinder and we had a little bit of fuel to just that cylinder just to try to make it live through the rest of the day. And it did keep basically living until it didn't and that's in the top four when it blew up. So there you go. It's, uh, it's a bit of a tragedy, but this is motorsports and this is racing and this stuff happens and, uh, you know, own it. All right. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more of this stuff, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much.